Mina, Kumbonwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Back with, I think, my last Be Filled with the Spirit episode. I think uh, yesterday I got most of that out of my system. I said the majority of what needed to be said. I've repeated over and over the need for all Christians to be filled with the Spirit. Um, and that's like step one prior to getting His divine weapons in our hands and then fighting for America and taking this nation back for Christ. That was... That, that word from the Lord is what kind of stirred up my heart to start up this series. I wanted to go a little bit more in depth. And there's definitely more a more biblical study I could like go through all the instances in the Old and New Testament where being filled with the Spirit was carried out. And I may do that at some point in the future, but I think as far as just every single day, I think for now, this one will be the last thing I want to address in Ephesians 5.18. Have you memorized it yet? Honestly, even though I've been in it every day, haven't quite memorized it yet, and it's a good verse to remember, not just because I'm charismatic, because it's in the Word of God. And it is something that we are supposed to continuously do as believers. We're supposed to always be in the Word of God, praying, worshiping. We are also supposed to continuously be filled with the Spirit. Ephesians 5.18 And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. I want to cover one very specific thing that especially happens in regards to the charismatic circles, and that's the whole tradition of being slain in the Spirit. Question numero uno for those who are not in the know and have not read through the entire Bible, is being slain in the Spirit scriptural? Is there any scriptural support for someone laying hands on you, you falling backwards and like, you know, just babbling gibberish or, you know, acting drunk and kind of, it feels great and wonderful. And the answer to, that's a more recent thing than being slain in the Spirit. Being slain in the Spirit is a few decades old. The whole being drunk kind of thing. That's kind of along the newer things that have been going on in the charismatic circles. And the answer to both of those questions is no. No, there is no scriptural example of being slain in the Spirit. No, there is no example of someone being drunk as in acting like a drunk in the Spirit. When someone was filled with the Spirit, as I've said before, a power came over them to do an act, to do a work. In the Old Testament, sometimes it came on them to direct the nation of Israel, to rebuke them for their sin, or it even came on them, as in the case of Saul, to go forth and kill the enemies of God. In the New Testament, when the Holy Spirit fills up someone as people speak in tongues, people prophesy, the ground shakes, the Word of God is spread. Those are the New Testament examples that you will find, particularly in the book of Acts. Now, having said that, I am not bashing being slain in the Spirit or feeling kind of hipsy when you're drunk in the Spirit. I'm actually not going to bash even the second one, though it sounds really weird because... Neither of them are actively condemned in the Bible. And since the Bible doesn't actively condemn either action, since it doesn't mention it at all, I do not feel at liberty to say that those practices are wrong or unjust. I can say that they're not biblical in the sense that they are not mentioned. I cannot say they are unbiblical in the sense that the Bible condemns those actions. They're not mentioned. They're not spoken of. And I will add here at the end, our God is a very, very big God. If something happens in the church or in the world and the Bible doesn't cover that very specific scenario, that doesn't mean it is of God, of man, or of the devil. It means that it, like most other things in life, need to be tested, need to be checked, need to be thought about, prayed about, examined, thoroughly studied, and a conclusion needs to be arrived at, not by some pastor, some elder that you trust, or by parents if you're, if you're young. You come to an answer. You think for yourself, and you say, hmm, that was wacky and crazy. Is God behind that? Or was that just man acting kind of dumb? Or was that a demonic manifestation? Hmm, Lord, please show me. And give me your word and your mind in regards to this matter. In Jesus' name, amen. He's the source of truth. And to give you another quick verse to wrap up this particular session. And, and for now, the entire study series on. For spiritual manifestations that you don't quite get or understand or seem kind of weird. 1 John chapter 2, verse 20. But you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. Now, obviously, there's not a human being who would ever claim to know literally everything. 
but there is no knowledge outside of your grasp because you have his anointing, you have his spirit in you. And if you are continuously filled with the spirit like you should be, then you continuously have that anointing. And with that anointing comes his knowledge, comes the mind of Christ. And so this series could go on and on and on and on and on. But for now, I'm going to close it there. And thank you very much for watching this. And if you've watched the entire series, thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching me and for supporting me. Not just the Word of God. You've chosen to listen to me this entire time. I have a stake in this. I've been the speaker. And you've chosen to watch me. Thank you if you have done so. Thank you very much for that. It is appreciated personally. Um, and even if you haven't, even if you're an atheist troll who's like, man, what a moron. This is good entertainment. I still love you. I love you all. And God bless you all.